How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Big Day Dave and this is a map tour for a new mod map to Farming Simulator 22 called Crater Lake 22. And we're going to start with the description from the mod hub and it reads, Decades after volcanic activity, the forest has regrown. Now it is time to harvest. Over the past few years, a drought has caused the surrounding lakes to dry up and provide a nice fertile area for a small farm and a massive dead forest to harvest. Welcome to Crater Lake 22. This is a basic map that offers a smaller area to farm and plenty of forest to harvest and expand. Six fields, no starting field, but good starting equipment. Sawmill produces planks, boards, and wood beams. Paper plant produces paper and cardboard rolls. Carpentry produces more than just furniture. BGA takes grass and wood chips. Animal dealer has a bale sale and a sell all points. I hope you enjoy and have fun on the version of Crater Lake. Bonus map includes Rogue River FS19 version. This is strictly a logging map, no farming. For nostalgia, I used all the original loading screens and PDA. There are no mods required for this map and it is created by Poor Boy and Catalyzer Industries and is 68.78 megabytes to download. And if we take a look, this is what the map looks like. You start out on the map down here in kind of the eh, southeast corner of the map, and you start out by owning farmlands number one, three, and seven. One being all the way up here. You can see it's just the starting portion of this kind of dead forest right here. Three being right here, and this is kind of your outer perimeter of the fields that includes your farm per se. And then number seven, which is where the biogas plant is. And you do start out with that biogas plant. The land is uh, pretty ranging in price. You can see starting down here in the south, you got $84,000, which isn't bad for the type of forest you got. You got $262,000, $213,882,000. So you, you, you will kind of spend a lot of money on land but the nice thing is is that it's forestry and if you're a forestry kind of person you will be able to make that money back very very quickly with forestry especially with this amount of starting equipment that you get on this map let's see we scroll down there are animals to start out with animal pens to start out with there are contracts available because you have several farms down at the, or should say fields down the south there. Uh, you do start with the production change. You can see here you have the biogas plant and it does take specific crops that are not normal to a biogas. So you have grass, potatoes, silage, slurry, manure, sugar beets cut, canola, sunflowers, corn, and wood chips. And all of them produce different things. And you have a couple of different outputs. You have DEF as an output. You have diesel and digestate. So a lot of... Uh, stuff that can go in and a couple of new items that we're not typically used to seeing coming out which is nice let's see uh and you do have collectibles available to you 20 of them to be precise and if we took a look at the mods specific to this map and we scroll down to the mods and dlcs you'll see crater lake 22 and you do have the mcculloch uh you got a couple of well you got the mac the Wilhelmina Superliner, Komatsu 93 uh, 10 uh, XC edit, and you can see that one's been edited to be able to cut up to 400 centimeters. That's massive. And you've got a Komatsu uh, logging uh, forwarder here. Uh, the Prinroth Raptor and the Damcon uh, PL edit, which looks like it's been edited to work at 27 miles an hour or so. Yeah, have fun uh, planting at that speed. That's going to be nice. Whew. Now, earlier, I don't think I said this, but let me make sure I do now. There's not technically mods required for this map, but as you can see, I have loaded in the Platinum Expansion uh, DLC, and there's a reason for that, and it's because a lot of the production points will produce the products as... Uh, that, that comes with the Platinum ex, uh, Expansion. And if you don't activate it, or if you don't have it, then those products, you will still be able to produce like wood chips as a byproduct, but it will just have a kind of 
blank screen as to what it is that item that line item is so it'll make more sense once we kind of get around and take a look at things uh, more mods specific to this map if we take a look under the build menu uh, there is nothing under the buildings nothing at all but if we go to products or productions uh, under factories we scroll off to the right we have here, nope, that's the Platinum Expansion, do, 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 do. there we go, Critter Lake. Got a sawmill, paper cardboard, and pallet uh, plants. You've got the biogas plant here, as well as the carpentry. Uh, nothing else under selling points, greenhouses, orchards, or generators. There is nothing under the animals, nothing under decorations, but under landscaping, we do have a couple of painting swatches in addition to our base. So let's go ahead and hop out here, and we are going to start driving around to the various places. Alright, so we're just going to head down south just a little ways. And from here, we're going to make a left. Another left. And then we're going to follow this kind of horseshoe driveway around to our first point of interest. And right over here is the grain mill. Stop here and purchase the grain mill for $96,000. And you have your inputs here and your outputs there. Hop back into the gator and we'll continue making our way around. And from here, we're going to make a left. And this is where the biogas plant is located. You got a bunch of bunker silos right here. And then the biogas straight ahead. So go ahead and stop here. Again, this is the custom biogas where you have all the custom inputs and outputs. Inputs solid are here. Liquid inputs are right here liquid outputs are right there and you have a biomethane uh, plant right there as well as a electrical charging station right there so now we're going to go ahead and head out of here go to the left And this is where we get to our first point of interest where I'm going to have to purchase to kind of show off what I was talking about earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and just borrow a whole bunch of money because there's eh, about two or three that I want to show off. We'll just get this all maxed out. There we go. So this is the carpentry. You can purchase this for $60,000. If we go in here, you can see the carpentry will produce furniture, shingles, prefab walls, staircase railings, floor tiles, bathtubs, and furniture from well, two types of furniture, one from wood and one from wood beams. Now, the thing is, is that if you do not have the Platinum Expansion uh, DLC already installed and you know, running, then pretty much all these do not show up with the exception of furniture. Uh, there is an extra row here where it says it's for shingles and I think floor tiles but the problem is, is that it doesn't show anything it doesn't like create anything besides the byproduct of wood chips so you're basically putting in the planks and getting out wood chips it's it's that's it so you're basically just shredding your planks is all it's turn it's yeah it's weird but I mean it's not weird but I mean it's just wouldn't make any logical sense without that Platinum Expansion DLC. So, 
oops, almost drove off. Input right here with a wood cell trigger right there, and output around the backside right here. And now the next point of interest is right around the corner, and again, it's one we're going to have to purchase. So you can see your input and output are right there. And this is the paper, cardboard, and pallet plant. 80,000 will purchase this. We'll go ahead and purchase it. And you can see paper rolls and car or, uh, carton rolls. Now, again, because this is specific to the Platinum Expansion DLC, if you do not have it installed, neither one of these rows show up. You're basically just spending $80,000 on nothing. You don't get an input. You don't get outputs. There's no recipe whatsoever. So just keep that in mind. And now backtracking ever so slightly. Over here is the animal dealer. This is the location you can bring or let me rephrase that. This is the location where you can purchase your animals if you have pens and pastures already installed on the map. This one we already do. So you can come to this location, purchase animals directly, or you can purchase them from the pen and pastures that you have installed on the map directly. Now the problem is, is that you purchase from this location or the pens and pastures, you will have an extra fee associated to that transaction. That is essentially a simulation of a delivery fee. That delivery fee can be pretty expensive, especially depending on how many animals you're talking about. Cows, for, in for instance, will be a hundred dollars per head for an adult cow. So. If you've got hundreds upon hundreds of cows you're trying to purchase all at once, it gets really expensive. So, to save on that money, you can come to this location with an animal trailer, whether leased or owned, load into the back of the animal trailer, deliver the animals to the pens and pastures yourself, and you'll save on that money. So, totally up to you, especially depending on how many animals you're looking to work on, uh, can be uh, you know, a good way to save money. Right here, we have the selling station generic. That is a sell point, and then around back we have the animal dealer sell point. Now we're going to turn around. Start heading off in this direction. And there's one kind of cool feature, I'm going to show it off once we get to it, but it took me a second to realize what it was. But then once I realized what it was, it's actually really kind of a cool feature especially for those people who do uh, really enjoy forestry. This tree here has the yellow and red markers on it. I had no idea what this was until I just so happened to go into the map. Now if I take a look, right here is where I'm at. I'm right on the border between all these kind of uh, land lots right here, these little farmlands. This is an indication of the boundary for your land. So if you own you know, one of these border areas, well, you know that that's the tree that's right on the boundary. You got another you know, marker way up there. You can continue to follow these and it will just continue to follow the boundary line, which is really cool. I really like that actually. Especially when you're doing a lot of forestry, it sometimes gets really hard to figure out what like, where's your starting point? Where's your stopping point? You got to go up to a tree and it's like, oh no, you can't cut this. So you got to keep adjusting until you finally find the tree that you can cut. Now, this is our next point of interest. This is the sawmill. You can purchase this for $100,000. And again, without the Platinum Expansion DLC, you won't get things like the wood beams. You won't get, uh, well, you will get planks. Um, but this is a planks long, so you won't get this one. So it's one of those, again, if you don't have it or you don't have it available, you can play this map. You're just going to get some very weird recipes and you're going to want to be careful and pay attention, especially when you have production costs of $12,000 a month. Pay attention to what's going on because you can spend a lot of money very quickly and very frivolously if you're not paying attention. So you have your inputs over here with a wood cell trigger right there and your outputs do, 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 I believe I believe they're actually popping out here but I don't see yeah I believe they come out right here in this kind of covered awning and then your wood chips are right there and now we'll continue
continue on. Directly in front of me is a gas station, so you have a place to refuel your equipment. Further along, you have your uh, shop trigger and repair trigger. Off to the left is the shop trigger. And over here, oh, where did I go? There I am. Repair trigger, right there. Now we'll backtrack just a little ways until we go over here. And now we're at our starting farm. So once we get to a good point right over here, I will, uh, yeah, stop right here. Let's take a look at our starting equipment because we're here at what's technically our starting farm. This little strip from uh, about right here to right over there is ours. We, we own it outright, but we don't own any of these fields. We don't do anything with them except for contracts until we start purchasing them. We do have some pretty good starting equipment, so let's take a look. Under owned items on the buy menu, go to small tractors. You have a Klaus Arian 660. <clears throat> A Rossel Mash Nova 330, that's under Harvesters. Under Forestry Machines, you have a Komatsu uh, 931XC, and that is the unedited version. You can see the 71 centimeter uh, cutting width. So if you want the 400 centimeter cutting width, which will pretty much take on anything out there, you need to make sure that you get the edited version. Uh, you've got another Komatsu 875 forwarder. Under cars, you have the John Deere XUV 865M, that's the Gator. Uh, trailers, we have a Rudolph TDK 301 RP, a Salic ANS 1900, we have two of those actually. Headers uh, for the Russell Mash here. Uh, corn header, we have a Ziegler Corn Champion 5R. Under cultivators, the Lemkin Schmarg 9500K. Under Cedars, a Lemkin Solitaire 12. Under Slurry Tanks, Farm Tech Super Cease 800. Mowers, the K Brand GMD 3123F. Under Wind Rowers, the K Brand GA 4731. Forage Wagons, the Pottinger Boss Alpine 251. Front Loaders, we have the Class FL 140. And Front Loader Tools, the Alba Universal Bucket. Right here, we do have a Sleep Trigger. Down over there is where a lot of our starting equipment is held. We did pass by a bit of it on the way over and into this section of the forest, this kind of opening here. You can see it parked right over there, our forwarder, our harvester. And now over here is where our animal pens are. Right here we have a chicken coop, room for 30. And you have your output, your eggs right there, and your input for feed there. Here is your cow pasture. 15 cows, you have water, feed, and milk. And then over here, last but certainly not least, our sheep pasture. Again, room for 15 sheep. Water, feed, and wool spawns right there. And that is the map. Now I will do one more thing just really quickly, which I thought was really cool. Let's go ahead and do a quick flyover off in this direction, see if I can find what it is I'm looking for. Check it out. You do own this little bit of land right here and all this stone that's here. You probably have every bit of, I don't know, just rough guess, million liters of stone available to you. But if we look at the map, it's right here. It's along this kind of ridge vein right here. You have another one up to the north. And again, you own just a little sliver of this smaller vein here. Now, this is the Deadwood area, and you do own the beginning of the Deadwood area, but to get all the way down here, you have to travel from where we are, which is down here by the sheep, go up and around all the way to here, and this is a grass road, so all the kind of darker brown road right here, that's like a, a general road that you're used to seeing, but this, is like overgrown with grass. It's a it's a road. You could potentially plow it out and make it into something if uh, you purchase the land there. But right here is where the kind of dead forest is. And I tell you what, I'll be rather honest with you. It's a little bit intimidating in here, and it's just the kind of overall look that kind of makes it intimidating. 
So let's kind of, again, you got the luscious green trees just all over the map, but then all of a sudden you get over to this side of it, and it's just everything, look at this, is just dead, just gone. I don't know, just very spooky, maybe the best way to put it. But yeah, it's, uh, that is it. That is Crater Lake 22. Now it is time to render my opinion and let you know what I think of this map. Now, because this is a forestry map, I will grade it on a somewhat different scale, but still the 0 to 5 rating as always. Um, I really like Poor Boys maps and, and Catalyzer, Catalyzer Industries. I really enjoy their maps. It's They very much go above and beyond what a normal forestry map would be. This one, on the other hand, I, I'm i just, there's something about it I'm not feeling, and I cannot put my finger on it. I wish that I could get a little bit more clear in detail about that, but there's just something about it that's just, it's not scratching that itch when it comes to a forestry map. And... I wish that I could like articulate it a little bit better but you can see like this this is gonna be some extreme forestry extreme like if we go up this road just a little ways you'll see like it's a gentle rise all the way up but then once you get into the dead forest that's really gonna be simple straightforward not a big deal kind of thing but you can see like all this and again, there's that kind of boundary line that we just passed by right there. So every time you see those little red and yellow marks, that's the indicator of a boundary. <clears throat> but you can see just how, like, you go and clear out this forest and it's going to be, you know, a lot. There's going to be a lot of forestry work to do, but it's also going to be very difficult cutting, getting in and out of places. You know, this, this is honestly the perfect map for the Platinum Expansion DLC. With the yarders and the uh, the other bits of equipment that we got from that pack or from that expansion, it, it's uh, yeah, it's got a lot going for it. So it's one of those. This map was perfectly built for that expansion, but uh, I don't know. There's other maps that Poor Boy has created that I feel is kind of a better balance and I, I understand that this one's kind of more geared towards the forestry like it's not meant to be a kind of here's that road I was talking about how it's kind of all overgrown um, but it's not meant to be a farming map this is meant to be first and foremost a forestry map so that being said I kind of give it a little leeway and grace but again it's just something about it where um, I think there's other forestry maps that are just a, a far better example of what could be done um, that Poor Boy has made. Um, I'm trying to think of one of them off the top of my head. Um, do, 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 and of course, I'm going to blank on the name right now. Um, but it was one of the first maps they made, and if I remember right, they dedicated it to their son. Um, Man, I cannot remember remember the name off the top of my head. But, anyways, it, it, it's I feel that like that one is kind of a better representation of what a forestry map can be, to where this one just seems I don't know, just doesn't like I said, it just doesn't scratch that itch for me. Um, so it, it's just a like, I, I'm not complaining, just. Uh, kind of you know putting in my two cents and, and whatnot and I wish I could kind of better articulate as to why this isn't necessarily you know scratching that itch but it's I don't know like you clear out all this area down here you buy this land and you clear all this out you've got a ton of room to grow and expand the map and do whatever so you know what I mean I don't know. There, there's a lot of things going for this map. There's really a lot of things going for it. There's a lot of pluses, but I don't know. There's there's areas like this where once you get this all cleared out, it's really kind of flat and not really much going on for the most part kind of thing. So it's one of those, like, 
it's gonna have its moment and then it's gonna fade this is one of those veins of stones I was talking about this is the larger the one in the north and you can just see the millions upon millions of liters of stones that are just chilling here waiting to be harvested you know and this one this vein gets purchased when you purchase the dead forest as well so that that's built into the price so you got uh, you got some room to be able to do other things on this map which is nice and that's also another reason why i like poor boys forestry maps is that it's not just forestry you're not just stuck doing that over and over until you finally expand it out to be something different and i guess this one is no exception um but when everything's said and done and i have to give it a grade um uh, zero to five scale as i normally do i would probably give this a three so somewhere in the middle I'm not, you know, heavily impressed. I like a lot of the other poor boy maps because there's a lot more, um, there's a lot more intricacies put into them. There's still that really deep forestry angle to the maps, but, um, there's other production points that kind of build on top of each other that allows you to kind of expand out and to do things with, um, and not only be reliant on forestry even though forestry is like the key thing on that map or on those maps um this one is just it just feels like forestry nothing else even though we do have those six fields in the south there it just really just feels like forestry and that's it um that's that's yeah that's probably the best way i can put it but that's uh, that's just how I feel about it. It's not meant to be kind of uh, an attack or anything like that. It's just a personal opinion and how I feel about it. But as I always say, even when it's a map that I don't necessarily feel best suits me and my tastes, there's always going to be somebody else out there who will disagree with me. And hey, if this map does it for you and scratches that itch, that's awesome. I'm always super appreciative to every single map maker who goes out of their way to make this stuff because as far as I'm aware, they're not paid to do this. You know, this is something they do as a hobby and they bring so much stuff to the community. So poor boy, Catalyst Industries, thank you so, so much. It, that was the right name, right? Uh, I don't want to get that wrong. Poor boy and Catalyzer Industries. Sorry about that. I, I think I said Catalyst Industries a couple of times, but Catalyzer Industries. Um, thank you both so much for bringing this map to the mod hub and I hope that you enjoyed this map tour If you did please show me by liking sharing subscribing following commenting doing all the things the algorithms enjoy you doing that shows you're engaged with this channel and enjoying the content and that being said I hope you have a fantastic day Take care